The tarp is off, the sun is back out, and we are set to play ball here at J.I. Clement Stadium. Thank you for joining us here on ESPN Plus. Ryan Pye alongside Amy Zimmer. It's game three between Georgia Southern and the University of Georgia. Take a look at what has happened in the series. Amy, it's been a great two games, especially for the Eagles. That's right. The Eagles taking down the Dog 6-3 back on March 3rd in game one in Athens. And then last night, Georgia Southern shutting out Georgia 1-0 in Augusta, winning the season series over the Dogs for the first time since 2015 and going for the sweep tonight. Bit of a unique series. You know, three different locations for three games. And as we said, we were in a brief weather delay here at J.I. Clement Stadium. 15% chance of rain moving forward. 73 degrees. It's cleared up, it looks nice, and it's a packed crowd here ready for game three and see, try to see the home team take the sweep. Take a look at the two pitchers for tonight's contest. It's the freshman, Garrett Brown from Georgia. Tyler Owens gets his third start, the senior for Georgia Southern. That's right, Brown with 13 total innings under his belt as a freshman, winning two, looking to get his third tonight to avoid the sweep. And Owens, a true veteran as a senior, picked up his first win of the season in game one against Georgia and looking to add on another tonight. That's the most interesting thing. He pitched in game one a victory for the Eagles back in Athens at Foley Field, and he's pitching against them for the second time in a week span here tonight on his home turf. You see his stats right there, 1-0 win-loss record, .61 ERA, and just over 14 innings pitch. See how he fares up against the number two team in the land, the Georgia Bulldogs here tonight. Here's a lineup Georgia will take the bats with. Anderson leads things off, followed by the hot-hitting Cam Shepard, Tucker Bradley. One of the two Tate brothers is batting cleanup. Cole bats fourth. Connors sixth. Things are rounded out by the right fielder, Riley King. He's playing right and batting ninth. And the first pitch, foul back. We're underway. So it is the sophomore Ben Anderson, the center fielder, leading things off for Georgia. The 0 1 pitch, taking low ball, too. Sophomore out of LaGrange leads the Bulldogs in the highest average so far this season. He's batting 418 in 2020. And he fouls a breaking ball off the screen. So the count's 1-2 here in the first batter of the game in Statesboro. The pitch way up and outside. Two two line in the left field hits sharply, but Cersei's there, and he's out number one. Ryan, I'm interested to see how this game's going to play out after we saw such a defensive battle in the last game. You see the defense Georgia Southern takes to the field with. You just saw Cersei out in left. Parker Beatier's in center. Mason McHorter, the power hitter, is in right. Swan, Stephen Curry, Austin Thompson, Blake Evans make up the rest of the infield. Owens is on the bump. Christian Avant. We'll catch balls and strikes from him. And the first pitch to Cam Shepard is fouled into the Georgia Southern dugout. Shepard is a senior out of Duluth, Georgia. He's batting 284 so far this season. Very dangerous part of the Georgia lineup. The top three, very speedy guys. If they get on base, they can hurt you. But Shepard's quickly down 0-2 to Tyler Owens. Yeah, Shepard's been one of the go-tos for the dogs. And he has started every game at shortstop since stepping on campus. Quite a career up in Athens, but he's down 1-2 and two now as that one misses high from Owens. Well, fun fact about Shepard, too, his father, Mike, actually played at Georgia Southern back in the 1980s. So I'm interested to know if father might be in the crowd tonight. A bit of a rivalry here as he <laughs> pops that one high up on the infield. Austin Thompson waves his arms. He camps out under it. 
And there's out number two. So two up, two down for the dogs here on the top of the first inning. That will bring up Tucker Bradley for Georgia. This Georgia Southern pitching staff has looked absolutely phenomenal in their past couple games. Three straight shutouts coming into tonight. First pitch swinging for Bradley. Pop fly into shallow left field. Cersei coming on, makes the running catch. So the Rawls go down one, two, three in the first inning. Georgia Southern takes to the sticks when we come back on ESPN+. Plus. So Tyler Owens looked good to start the game for Georgia Southern. Let's see how the freshman Garrett Brown responds on the hill. Brown making his fourth start on the year. He's 1-1 one one with a 3.4 ERA. Had four innings pitched against Georgia Southern earlier this last week. Six hits, three runs, zero walks, but had two punch outs and taking a loss in that game. Amy, what do you expect to see from him here in J.I. Clements tonight? Well, I think you're going to see a very composed Garrett Brown. For being a freshman, he holds himself like a senior, and he's starting to really prove himself in these uh, ball games that he's appeared in. And again, 13 total innings for him so far this season, two wins under his belt. And I have confidence that he could be the one for the dogs to be able to help avoid the sweep. Trying to avoid, as we said, a season sweep as the first game was last week back in Athens. Then last night, Georgia Southern went on to beat University of Georgia 1-0 in SRP Park in Augusta. And of course, they're playing right here on ESPN Plus tonight from Statesboro. Brown going to go up against a pretty high Georgia Southern lineup, especially at the time. You see Stephen Curry, the ever-consistent leadoff man, batting first for Georgia Southern. Mason McCorder followed by the team leader in average. Mitchell Golden, the designated hitter, bats third. Austin Thompson back up into the cleanup spot. Christian Avant, Noah Searcy, Jason Swan, Parker Beatier, and Blake Evans route things out. Rodney Henning got his 800th career head coaching win last night in Augusta. He throws this starting nine out there looking for 801 and a sweep over the number two ranked Bulldog team. See if Stephen Curry can get things started for the Eagles here in the first inning. First pitch swing and chopper over to third. Blaylock fires across the diamond. And Curry's out on the first pitch he sees. Number four, the right fielder. Take a look at the defensive lineup for Georgia here tonight. Tucker Bradley's in left, Ben Anderson is in center, Riley King is in right field. You just saw Gary Blaylock make that throw to Patrick Sullivan across the diamond. Cole Tate and Cam Shepard are the middle of the infield. Gary Brown on the bump. Shane Marshall is behind the dish. Connor Tate, the twin brother of the second baseman, is the designated hitter for the Dogs. So that will bring up the power hitting lefty from Georgia Southern, Mason McHorter. He sends a pop up high. It's not going to leave the infield. Cam Shepard is going to make way for Tate. And right near the second base bag, Tate makes the play. Two down. Well, not the results the Eagles were hoping for, but their bats are going. So that will bring up Mitchell Golden. And a lot of competition on the Georgia Southern roster. Golden has fought his way through that. He's in the starting lineup, and he sends the first pitch into center field. Anderson trots over, and Georgia Southern goes down in the first. No hits for either side. We head to the second on ESPN+. Plus. So Tyler Owens back out on the bump for his second inning of work. Got the dogs go down in order in the first frame. Unfortunately for him, Georgia Southern doing the exact same. Both teams going down really quick, aggressive at the dish, but can't get any hits to fall. A couple of hard hit balls to the outfield, but nothing to show for it. So just 10 pitches in the first for Tyler Owens. He takes back out, see him getting loose. And so far, so good through just one inning, but... You would expect to see a lot of that aggressiveness now that this Georgia team has seen Owens back in game one last week. 
That's right. And especially just coming off of a game as well. You know, these teams are now very familiar with one another. However, this time they're in Statesboro, new atmosphere, uh, but great showing tonight. Lots of fans in house. A lot of fans sticking around even through the very brief rain delay that we had when this game was scheduled to start at 6 o'clock. Some made their way up to the upper concourse and ducked under shelter, but a lot of people held their ground, especially in the general admission and student section areas. Good <laughs> showing from Eagle Nation here at J.I. Clement Stadium. The first pitch of the second inning is a called strike to Cole Tate. Yeah, no one wanted to lose their seats for this game. This is a big one, and it shows with how many fans came out tonight to see Georgia and Georgia Southern go head-to-head. 0-1 -to, -head. Oh, to Tate is chopped towards short. Thompson Fields fires. Got to hurry. Got him by half a step. So Austin Thompson has to sit back and wait for that one to bounce up around his chest. Makes a strong throw over to Jason Swan at first. And Cole Tate is the first out of the second inning. So another senior in Georgia's lineup, Patrick Sullivan, will dig into that left-handed side. And he takes it over the outside corner. Strike one. Another player for Georgia right out of their home state from Sandy Springs. Yeah, and Sullivan looking for a great season ahead because last season he actually missed 14 games in March due to an injury. And, but he surely made himself known when he came back because on his first game back last season, he smashed a home run in his first at bat back in the game. So he's one of those players that brings a lot of excitement to the game. And it takes just three pitches to sit down the Georgia first baseman here from Tyler Owens. He's looking sharp here early. Sullivan takes two strikes, swings and misses at a third, and quickly two away here in the second. So we saw his brother to start the inning. Now we'll see the other twin, Connor Tate, comes up for the Bulldogs. And once again, Tyler Owens attacking that zone, strike one. Going right after the dogs here early, the 0 1 pitch off speed, misses low and away. One and one now to Connor Tate. He loses the bat on the swing. He missed the ball and Luckily, no one in the path of that bat as it flies towards the backstop. Here's another look. You can just see the bat completely just slide out of his hands. Tate can't even believe it. Fans got a little surprise back there. You can see some of the kids cover their faces, not ready for that one. You expect foul balls and flinching on that. You never really expect a bat to be heading your way. But regardless, it's one and two now to Connor Tate. Swing and a miss, and that gets Owens out of the second. Six up, six down. Tyler Owens looks good. Eagles coming back to the plate. We mentioned him getting his 800th career head coaching win earlier. There he is, Rodney Hinn, the skipper for Georgia Southern in his 21st season with the Eagles. He's 719, 492 in his career in Statesboro, hired way back in 2000. He had a great career, and he's looking to have a great season here in 2020. That's right, already off to a 10-5 and five start, just getting ready to open conference play, and I think the Eagles making a big statement with Rodney Hennon leading the way with their performance against Georgia so far this season. And you mentioned a conference play right around their corner. Their next series is this weekend against Troy. And it's a big morale boost to get a win over an in-state rival like Georgia, if you want to call them rivals. They don't necessarily play in every sport every year. But they're the number two team in the nation for a reason. They are a very talented roster. And being able to take not only just the series, but have an opportunity for a sweep 
can really just change your mindset completely heading into Sunbelt play this weekend. Austin Thompson swings at the first pitch he sees. That ball's back to the warning track, and it's off the wall. Thompson's going to round second. He's on his way to third. Cutoff throw is going to be stopped there, and a leadoff triple for Austin Thompson and Georgia Southern. Fans are on their feet for that one. This is our first time that we're seeing a player actually getting a ball to fall here. Here's another look. Just left up in the zone. Thompson getting a big chunk of bat on it. Nearly hit it out of the ballpark. It short hops the wall out in a right center field. And Speedy Thompson was thinking three out the box. And the leadoff man's in scoring position just 90 feet away for Georgia Southern here in the second inning. Avian swings at the first pitch. He sees ground ball to short. That'll get the job done. It's 1-0 Eagles. Eagles coming out quick here in the bottom of the second. A really nice job by Austin Thompson to get the ball. Rolling for the Eagles here. Now up 1-0. Going after the first two pitches of the inning. From Gary Brown, plates the first run of the ball game, first run for the Eagles. They're up one to nothing. That's all it took for them to win last night in Augusta. See how the rest of this one plays out as Noah Searcy digs in for Georgia Southern. And Thompson, too, a South Effingham native, so great game for him to be able to come in and have a start like that in front of this big of a crowd. I'm sure he has a lot of friends and family inside the stadium. Two over the count to the left fielder for Georgia Southern, Noah Searcy. He chops one over to the left side of the infield. It's caught by Blaylock. Throw is high. Ricochets off the wall on the first base side. Searcy's aboard. Wait for the ruling on that one. Blaylock had to rush that throw to get Searcy out at first, and it just completely sailed on him. Rolled over, good job cutting it off from Blaylock at third, but not being able to set his feet in order to get the speedy Cersei over at first. It's going to be an error on Garrett Blaylock. Cersei thought about running initially, stomped himself. Good stop from Shane Marshall behind the dish, keeping that one in front of him. That one traveled about 59 feet. The 1-0 to Swan. This is low and away. To a pitch up in the zone, ball three. Swan doing a nice job working the plate, taking his time. Three a pitch, that one finds the plate. Still a good hitter's count now to the Eagles' first baseman. It's three and one. Swan off to a little bit more of a slower start this year. He started 13 of Georgia Southern's 15 games, batting just over 220 on the year. He swings and pops this one up into right field. Riley King drifting towards the line, and he dropped it in fair territory. Throw to second, trying to get Cersei. Is bobbled by Shepard. No more advances from there. And Georgia Southern catches two breaks in a row, two Bulldog errors. Now have two runners on for the Eagles. And Searcy making his way from first to second. You can see him hesitate. 
He was even confident in the dogs making that catch, but weren't able to get it. Eagles now in scoring position. Riley King looked like he was just trotting and jogging over and thought he had that one played perfectly. And at the last moment, he picked up the pace and sprinted towards that right field foul line. And goes just off the heel of his glove. And now we're going to see a conference at the mound with Gary Brown. As Parker Beatier make his first plate appearance of the day. So apart from the leadoff triple to Austin Thompson, it's not like Brown's been making bad pitches. He's been getting the job done. He got a ground ball. He got a fly ball. His defense is not playing that well behind him. Yeah, it seems that the outfield just needs to get settled. It seems like they're playing a little hesitant now that Georgia Southern was able to come out quick in the bottom of the second and bring home and be able to get on the board one nothing. And you were interested to see exactly what Georgia Southern was going to come out to do mentally. They are ready to go. They are fired up. You saw it on the triple from Austin Thompson coming up and flexing his muscle straight to the dugout. He, they want this sweep to prove they are real contenders, not just in the Sun Belt, but outside maybe mo moving forward. See if they can extend to their lead here. Parker Beatier comes in and takes outside ball one. Beatier does have really good speed. He's a threat to lay down a bun if he has to, move both runners in a scoring position. Didn't square there, takes outside, ball two. <laughs> 2 0 pitch, once again outside. So he's missed there three times in a row to beat here. This might be, see if it goes out there again, might be an unintentional, intentional walk. Try to get him to chase if he does. Got Blake Evans waiting on deck, and they did. So they went to that same spot four times in a row. That one looked a little bit intentional. He didn't miss that exact spot by much, trying to get Beatier to chase. And now the bases are full of Eagles. And the nine-hole hitter, Blake Evans, digs in for Georgia Southern. Yeah, right. I'm going to go with that being an intentional walk, but a risky one. Now you've got the bases loaded. We're going to be interesting to see what the Eagles can get done and see how the dogs respond on defense. And already we're going to see a Bulldog leave the dugout and head towards the bullpen. That's Will Childers, another freshman, trotting out to get loose. Meanwhile, the other freshman in the game for Georgia, deal strike one to Blake Evans. So a tough situation. Now for Garrett Brown, bases loaded with just one out. Evans drives that one out of play foul, 0-2. Corners for Georgia are playing on the grass. Thinking about coming to the plate on a ground ball, hit sharply to them. Middle of the infield, stay back, double play depth. Turning a double play on Blake Evans, no easy task. He's got good speed out the left-handed side. But the 0-2 pitch to him is grounded towards second, could be two. Flip the second for one, throw over to first, they got him! So Georgia turns a double play to get out of a jam. We head to the top of the third on ESPN+. Plus. So the Bulldogs escape a bases loaded jam. We are, it's a one run game. Austin Thompson leads off the bottom of the second inning with a triple. They find a way to scratch him across. It's one nothing off of one hit from Georgia Southern. There you see Georgia's head coach, Scott Strickland. Trying to avoid the season sweep here in Statesboro. Tyler Owens out on the mound, has looked sharp early, just as he did last week against the Bulldogs. He's came out firing on all cylinders. He's pounding the zone, and Georgia hasn't had an answer quite yet. No, oh, and Ryan, we're seeing a much different ball game than last night. I mean, already that we've just seen in 
the last two innings have been much more of an offense power than from last night when it was just all about defense and that one nothing win for the Eagles. Tough to find a way to get a run across, and Georgia Southern was the only team that could. one nothing win from SRP Park last night. one nothing lead for, for them in J.I. Clements so far. Top of the third, Blaylock leads things off. He takes high, ball one. Gary Blaylock, another junior on the other side, who's been off to a slow start for their respective teams. We mentioned Jason Swan trying to get things going for the Eagles here in 2020. Blaylock's made 13 starts. He's batting under 200 on the year. So this is a series before they start conference play with Florida this weekend, trying to get himself on the right track. 1-1 pitch, lined in the center field. Beatier drifts over, and there's out number one. Just so far, Tyler Owens is hitting his spots. He's got two strikeouts on the night, but he's not exactly blowing it by people. He is making them Try to fight off tough pitches. He's not leaving anything over the middle of the plate. On the other side, Brown made one mistake, and Austin Thompson capitalized. And in these types of games, that's exactly what you have to do. Is that time Owens misses well outside the zone. Ball one. It's the sophomore Shane Marshall at the plate now for the Dogs. Grounds that one to Thompson at short. Tricky hop, he fields, throws to first. Two away. So two quick at-bats in the third inning. Get things started two away for Georgia. They'll go to the nine-hole hitter, Riley King. King has been a solid and very reliable player for the Dogs. And last season, he started all 63 games. So he's one of those players that they can really rely on, hoping to see the Dogs get something going with him. And he takes a first pitch strike from Tyler Owens. Squeaks by Avant behind the dish to the pack stop. Ball one. So the one one pitch misses low to Riley King. Two one hits sharply to short. Thompson fields throw over to first is in time to retire the side. So no hits going for the dogs in the third, much like the first two innings. Owens is rolling on ESPN Plus. We are T-Mobile. So Garrett Brown back out for his third inning of work. Georgia Southern got to him in the second off a Austin Thompson triple. Just 21 pitches so far. Thompson's triple was the only hit. It's an earned run, but got out of a big-time bases-loaded jam to end the second inning. It looked like the Eagles were threatening to put a big lead on the scoreboard. Instead, got Blake Evans to ground into an inning-ending double play. And he comes out now, but he's going to face the top of the Eagle batting order. And here's the one concern that we look at here, Amy, is that both these teams start conference play this weekend. Both of these pitchers have bright spots ahead of them and may pitch in those conference matchups. How long are they going to be in this game tonight? Exactly. That's the big question. And already with what we saw happen with Brown already having a meeting on the hill, it's going to be interesting to see how long he'll last for the dogs. So here is Stephen Curry leading things off for Georgia Southern. He takes high and tight. Ball one.
Murray grounded out to Blaylock over at third base his last time up. And this 1-0 pitch, check swing, got a piece of it. Counts even. That one's inside. They're going to say he did not get a piece of that. That's my mistake. It squeaked by Marshall behind the plate. It looked like it might have got a piece of Curry's bat. And instead, the count's 3-0 and to the Georgia Southern leadoff man. That one catches a corner from Garrett Brown, 3-1. and one. Foul. Off the face of the Georgia Southern dugout, full count. Curry reaches base over 54% of the time. That's why it's in that leadoff spot. Unfortunately for him, he's got bumps and bruises from being the team record holder and hit by pitch. He's not hit on this one. Instead, he's got a base hit. Poked it in the left field. Leadoff runner on for Georgia Southern. So Curry's aboard with a leadoff single. That will bring up the right fielder, Mason McHorter. He flew out on the infield his last time up. And again, McHorter, one of those players who's a big threat when he goes up to bat. He led the team in home runs last season at 12. That one squeaks by Marshall behind the plate. Throw to second. Offline. Might have had a chance to get Curry. Got a late jump. But the throws on the other side of the back. Curry slides in safely. And now he's on second base in scoring position with no one retired. One on, nobody out. Dangerous hitter at the plate. For Georgia Southern, the pitch from Brown. McCorder stopped himself, ball two. Two zero to Mason McCorder, cut on and missed. Well, the count is two and one to the powerful lefty from Georgia Southern, and that one misses low from Brown, ball three. Three one pitch from Garrett Brown. The quarter swings through it. And there is action up and brewing now in the Georgia Southern bullpen. See Jonathan Edwards, the sophomore relief pitcher, up and getting loose for the Eagles. Payoff pitch to McHorder, and that's strike three. McHorder's down on strikes. Curry still stands at second. And that brings up the designated hitter, Mitchell Golden. Off-speed pitch just had McHorter fooled well out on his front foot. Not able to draw some type of contact from that at bat and advance Curry. So it's going to be up to Mitchell Golden now at the play. First pitch to Golden misses in the other batter's box. Ball one.
Ground ball hits sharply towards second. Tate's throw over to first is in time. And Mitchell Golden is the second out of the third inning. So now comes the man who delivered the one hit for Georgia Southern that played it the one and only run so far. Alston Thompson had a leadoff triple in the bottom of the previous inning. One right now would make it two to nothing. Eagles. Instead he takes inside ball one. Off-speed pitch nearly got away from Brown that time. Good stop by Marshall. Well, Ryan, I was going to say last time I brought up Austin Thompson and mentioned he was from South Effingham. You gave me a look, and now I know why. Rival you, high schools. You back guys in, are rivals. <laughs> played against each other back in the old high school glory days. Another nice stop by Shane Marshall <laughs> behind the play. That must be fun getting to see some former teammates out here getting to play. And batting cleanup, and so far the game's only success offensively. It's a good thing to watch. He's ahead 3-0 now against Garrett Brown. That one finds a strike zone. 3-1. and one. Check swing from Thompson. Did he go around? They say he did. And it's a full count. Stephen Curry just 90 feet away over at third base. Moved over on the Mitchell Golden ground out to second. Payoff pitch to Thompson. Line drive, base hit. Curry's going to score easily. Thompson, the only two hits on the day for either team, makes it two to nothing. Austin Thompson just doing his job tonight for the Eagles. Being able to find an answer against the Dogs twice now. Back-to-back -back innings. Gets up in a 3-0 count. Brown battles back to make it 3-2 and two and makes another costly mistake. The triple that he led off with in the second inning was well up in the zone around the letters. He drove it in right center field. This one comes a little bit more in, but still up in his wheelhouse. Line drive shot in the left. Extends the Georgia Southern lead. And Thompson's off to the races. Throw to second. Is it in time? They got him. But before he's thrown out stealing, Austin Thompson makes it a 2 to nothing Georgia Southern lead. Bulldogs coming back up, and we head to the fourth. So with conference play coming up this weekend, Tyler Owens' day is done after just three innings of work and no hits. So we're going to see Jonathan Edwards come in for Georgia Southern on in relief. Four and two-thirds innings pitch, just two hits allowed. Six strikeouts with five walks, and we'll see how he fares against one of the top teams in the country against Georgia. He's got a two-run lead to work with. Yeah, Edwards, just as a freshman, appeared in just 12 games, including only one start, pitching for a total of 16 innings, recording 18 strikeouts. And we figured this change was eventually going to be coming. And conference play, as we said, Georgia Southern opens up with Troy later on this week, actually this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, right here from Statesboro. And they're going to need Tyler Owens to start one of those games, especially the way he's looked as of late last week against Georgia and obviously here tonight. Hasn't even surrendered a hit. Looked so efficient through his three innings of work, but Rodney Hennon still deciding this game doesn't mean as much in the long haul. Got to save up one of their starting arms for later this week. That's right, Ryan. When you see Owens walk off the hill, you're almost thinking, wait a second, it's too soon. You're doing so well. But when it comes to this time of year, this is the time when you have to be strategic and start saving your players when you're diving into conference play. Georgia Southern has a long road ahead of them. They weren't even picked to finish atop their own conference. And so far they're hanging with a team that's picked to finish in one of the top schools in the nation. So... Going for a season sweep of the Bulldogs. So far, so good. Austin Thompson lighting it up at the plate for Georgia Southern. He's got the only 
He's got two of their three hits. Drove in one run and scored the other himself. But now back at the top of the order for the Bulldogs. Ben Anderson pops one down the left field line. Cersei drifts over, but he's going to run out of room into the Eagle bullpen. So now this might be a little bit of a strategy from Rodney Hinnon. They let Owens go through the entire order one time. Maybe we'll see Jonathan Edwards do something of that nature, if not at least go through an inning or two. And 1-1 one, one pitch is in there for a called strike. Regardless, great opportunity for these players, especially younger players, to get an opportunity to go up against a ranked team like Georgia. So one and two now, Jonathan Edwards fires in there and misses low and inside. Final stat line for Tyler Owens, three innings pitched, no hits, no runs, no walks, two strikeouts, faced the entire Georgia order just one time, nine batters faced, through 28 pitches. Unbelievably efficient through his three innings of work. Good sign for Georgia Southern fans. Anderson takes low and the count runs full. Payoff pitch. Foul straight back. Anderson lying out to left in his first and only trip to the plate. Got another full count here against Jonathan Edwards. And the pitch is taken high, ball four. And now finally here in the top of the fourth inning, Georgia, South, Georgia excuse me, has their first base run. So Anderson's aboard with a leadoff walk. Here comes Cam Shepard for the Dogs. First pitch swinging off the end of his bat. Foul ball strike one. Swing and a miss from Shepard. It's 0-2. The new pitcher, Jonathan Edwards, can find his way to pitch around a leadoff walk. 0-2 now to Cam Shepard. This is high. 94 mile an hour heat. Out of that right hand from Edwards. Edwards comes set for the one-two pitch. And he barely misses that outside corner. Counts even at two and two. Anderson at first is running. Pitch is Slide back and over our heads here in the booth. We'll do it again, 2-2, two, two, still the count. Shepard taking his time trying to find an answer here against the Eagles. In their last meeting, he wasn't able to do so. No hits. Struck out twice. Once again, another 2-2 two, two pitch from Jonathan Edwards. 
Anderson not running this time, but Shepard is swinging and missing. He's the first out of the fourth inning. Good pitch from Jonathan Edwards just outside the zone. Had Shepard leaning and reaching. You get a second look at it here. Lunging out on that outside half. Can't get a piece of it. Edwards is first out as a strikeout victim from Cam Shepard. So now Tucker Bradley, who got off to an absolute tear for Jordan to start the season, has since cooled down just a hair. But still a very dangerous hitter on that left-hand side. First pitch from Edwards misses up and away, ball one. Big swing and a miss from Bradley. Bradley, one of those players for the dogs that are just so hungry to be able to break into the season and get things going. Last season, he actually was limited to just the opening three-game series against Dayton due to a shoulder injury. He was uh, diving to make a catch and ended up having to apply for a redshirt season. He came back and he has made the most of it so far, batting 407. Starting all 17 games for the Dogs. Got a 1-1 count against Jonathan Edwards here. Off-speed pitch, fouls it back. And Georgia kind of had a sour taste in their mouth after last season. They got knocked out of the tournament in the regionals on their home field at Foley Field in Athens. Lost to Florida State, finished the season 46-17. Have much bigger goals in sight this year. Got ranked there in the top five to start the year off. Sliding here late, drop two to Georgia Southern, trying to avoid the sweep. One, two to Bradley. Fights it all. Currently here, Georgia holds a 14 and three record. Two of their losses coming up against Georgia Southern, as we already mentioned. Got off to an excellent start. Only one loss on the year until they faced the Eagles on their home turf and just couldn't get it done. Another one-two from Edwards. Anderson is running this time. Pitch in the dirt. Avance throw. They got him. Tough pitch to throw him out on, and somehow Christian Avan gets it done. But Scott Strickland's going to come out and have a word. He doesn't think they quite got him in second base. No, and here's another look. You see the bounce, but that looks good to me. Really quick bang, bang play over at second base. Anderson said he got in under the tag. And Scott Strickland is giving the umpire an earful. That's Mike Cheek out there on second base. Strickland pleads his case, but nothing changes. He's going to trot back to the dugout. And now, deuce is wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs here in the top of the fourth inning. Edwards catches a break from his catcher. And the 2-2. Hits sharply past the diving Stephen Curry at second. And finally, Georgia breaks into that hit column with two away in the fourth. Tucker Bradley finds a way on for the Dogs. That will bring up the cleanup hitter for Georgia Cole Tate. We'll dig in and try to get something going for Georgia offensively here. They've been quiet. As I just said, that was the first hit of the night here in the top of the fourth inning. Just their second base runner. That's a swing and a drive into left center field. Peter drifts over and that will retire the side. 
Georgia gets their first base runners. Can't capitalize on it. Georgia Southern coming back up, leading by two. Georgia Southern up two to nothing as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning here on ESPN Plus. Ryan Pye, Amy Zimmer here on the call. And so far, it's just been a tale of two teams. Georgia Southern seems hyped up, ready to go. Georgia seemed a little flat. They finally got their first base runners on the top of this inning. They haven't capitalized on any of their chances just yet. That's right, Ryan. And what we're seeing is a lot of emotion out of Georgia Southern. And you're going to get that when you're an unranked team going up, a ranked opponent, almost the best in the nation. Georgia coming into this matchup, ranked number two. So Eagles looking for the opportunity to get the series sweep. Gary Brown still out on the mound for the Bulldogs here in the bottom of the fourth inning. We mentioned Georgia Southern already made their first pitching change with conference play right around the corner. Scott Strickland electing to keep his daughter, the freshman, out on the rubber for another inning of work. He trails two to nothing. And Christian Avant would lead things off for the Eagles. First pitch goes behind the Georgia Southern catcher. That one. Safe to say that one just got away from Garrett Brown, ball one. We will see how much time Brown has left out on the mound. There is action. The lefty's up and throwing in the pin. That one's hit high in the air. Still on the infield cam, Shepard holds what he's got there is out number one. So that will bring up the Georgia Southern left fielder Noah Searcy after Shepard retires the leadoff hitter of the inning. Searcy reached on an error his first time up. As part of a bases loaded second inning for Georgia Southern. Couldn't get any more across. Blake Evans grounding into an inning inning double play before they got a chance to really put some numbers in the score column. And Searcy takes one off his leg. He'll head to first base on the hit by pitch. No, Cersei is a pretty built guy, and you can see right here on the replay, didn't even flinch. Took it, <laughs> tossed his bat, and he said, I'll take my free base. Thank you very much. Yeah, Cersei, one of those powerful players for the Eagles last season alone. He was third on the team in slugging percentage with 469. So he's on for the second time tonight. Jason Swan digs in, takes on the inside half, strike one. Swan also reached on an error in his lone at bat back in the second inning. Back to back errors. Looked like it spelt trouble for the Bulldogs and their defense actually. Found a way to get themselves out the inning. Cersei thought about running, stopped himself. Swan takes low and away, ball two. If you're Georgia, Swan is not a player you want to get on the bases because last season Swan led the team in stolen bases 16 out of the 17 times. Brown throws over to first base to check in on Cersei. Took a couple steps towards the second base bag, back in it on that last pitch. See if he's going here. He's not, and Swan takes just high, ball three. Three one check swing and the call strike anyway. So full count now to the Eagle first baseman Jason Swan. Cersei stands on second after being hit by a pitch. 
He's got good speed. See if he's off to the races. Though there is just one out. He is running. Swung on and driven to left center field. That one's got a chance. That was off the wall. Cersei still running. He'll round third base. They're not even going to throw it in. Georgia Southern leads three to nothing. And the fans here at J.I. Clemens Stadium are on their feet. They love it. Georgia Southern extends their lead off the bat of Jason Swan. Talk about some power from Swan there on that one. Sending that one almost out for a home run. And that, too, something that the Eagles can continue to just use as motivation and also as that momentum carrying it over Georgia. You see, that one just left right over the middle of the plate. Swan not missing it. Cersei was off running with the pitch. And that will be all for the freshman Garrett Brown. He's going to leave down three runs and a runner on second base already. So we're going to see the first pitching change for Georgia. It is going to be Justin Glover, the senior lefty, coming in. We'll see him against Georgia Southern when we come back. The freshman Garrett Brown's day is done on the mound. Make way for the senior Justin Glover out of Buford, Georgia. Coming on in relief, Jason Swan just smacking one off the face of the wall out in left. Trying to keep Georgia Southern at bay and avoid a series sweep. Meanwhile, the Eagles back in business. Cersei on the hit and run, executed to perfection on the line drive shot off the wall in left center field. He scores all the way from first. And as you said, we talked about it earlier, Georgia Southern just seems to be more motivated. You can tell by their body language. You can tell by the energy in the dugout. They want this sweep, and they want it bad. Yep, and games like this, when it comes to having not only a in-state rivalry, but also an opportunity to go up against a ranked opponent, myself being a former Division One athlete, sometimes anything on paper just kind of goes out the window because it comes down to playing with emotions and who wants it more. And right now, we're seeing that with Georgia Southern. Baseball is a very mental game. You get things going. You never know what can happen. Even Georgia Southern's head coach says hitting is contagious. We'll see if that's true. Parker Beatier comes up with Swan on second. Three nothing Eagle lead here at the bottom of the fourth. Beatier takes inside. Ball one. One zero. -oh. Another good stop from Marshall, slotting well over into the right-handed box to knock that one down. Two-zero pitch from Glover. This is inside ball three. So we saw back in Beatier's first plate appearance, it was an unintentional, intentional walk. Can't really speculate as to if that was actually the case, but four straight pitches that missed on the outside half to see if he chased to load the bases for Blake Evans. Now another 3-0 count and make it another four pitch walk to Parker Beatier. Once again, he's on base for Blake Evans. Eagles third baseman ended that rally back in the second inning. Bases loaded, grounded into a double play. Cole Tate to Cam Shepard over to Sullivan. Dogs would love another one of those right here. Runners on first and second with one away. And off speed well outside the zone from Glover.
1-0 pitch to the 9-hole hitter for the Eagles. Pickoff play. Squeaks in a center field. No advance. Just knocked down by the shortstop, Shepard, and Cole Tate got a piece of it as well. Here's another look. Swan thinking of going after he sees the ball as well. Hesitates, but then ends up staying on second. And again, Swan, one of those players Georgia has to watch out for. He's known for stealing bases. He did it all last season, leading the team. He's already got seven so far this year. He started out in the top three of this Georgia Southern lineup. He got out to a slow start in 2020. Found himself sitting seventh. Worked down for him so far tonight. He's got an RBI double, but he's been caught stealing just twice. You don't really want to make that out over at third, especially when you have good enough speed to score. We'll see if he's running here. He's not. Blake Evans takes high and tight. Ball two. Well, this is the second batter that Justin Glover has faced, and he has not thrown a strike to either of them yet. Six straight balls. There's the first strike. Two and one now to Evans. Swung on, poked to the infield, base hit. Hinton's going to wave Swan around third. Throw to the plate, soft line, not in time. Throw over to third. Won't get the runner there either. Beatier advances. What an impressive play by the Eagles. Most of the team making their way out of the dugout to celebrate for that one. Fans are loving it. Make it another run for Georgia Southern. They are putting on a show for their home crowd here tonight. So it's four to nothing, Eagles. Still threatening here with one away, runners on the corners. Leadoff man Stephen Curry's up at the dish. Throw over to first to try to check on Evans, not in time. Four run lead to work with for Georgia Southern. Do not put it past them to play small ball here with Stephen Curry. He's got a good stick. He had a hit back in his second time up. Both runners on base are fast. As that one's going to get by Marshall behind the plate. Beatier's going to score. Evans moves up 90 feet. Make it 5 to nothing. Great job by Georgia Southern staying alert there. Getting the nice read to make it home in time. And then as for Justin Glover, I'm interested to see how much longer we may see him. Having trouble with his command here and his relief stint. Giving up just the one hit after the walk to beat here to lead the inning off. He's still in a bind. Runner on second base. Just one out and he misses way outside to Stephen Curry. And Glover really is one of those solid players for Georgia. Last season alone, he made a team high of 25 relief appearances and did a great job. Off-speed pitch. Can't find the play. Not anywhere near it. 3-0 to Stephen Curry. And this is definitely the part of the Georgia Southern lineup you cannot afford to make mistakes to. You keep putting runners on, you give chances to people like Mason McCorder, albeit he's 0 for 2 tonight. You leave one over the plate to him, this game could get blown out the water. But there's a first strike to Stephen Curry. As you hear the fans here in J.I. Clements, they're loving it. They have the Who's House chant going on. Loving the five-run lead, hoping to take the, lead, the series sweep over the Bulldogs. The 3-1 outside ball for to Curry. This is going to be a huge test for Georgia to see if they can get themselves settled in this moment on defense. And it looks like coach is coming out. So 
we're going to have another chat at the mound now with Glover as he struggled to find his own two walks from the three batters that he's faced. Mason McCorder awaits. Oh yeah, lefty on lefty matchup. We'll see how that goes. There is someone up and throwing in the Georgia bullpen. We'll see how much longer they're going to stick with Glover out on the hill. And we mentioned it earlier as to how even taking the series from the Bulldogs can be such a mental boost for Georgia Southern. On the other end of that spectrum, if Georgia were to continue to, to get swept by the Eagles like the way it's going so far tonight, it's going to be interesting to see how they face off with the number one team in the nation in Florida this weekend as they travel to Gainesville and try to rebound from potentially getting swept by a team that you would have been favored by a lot coming into the series. I think rebound is the key word you use there, Ryan, for Georgia. This is a very important game for them to get under as they head in to face Florida. Trying to fly ball to left. It's going to fall. It's fair. Gets away from Bradley in left. Runs going to come in to score it. Six to nothing. Georgia Southern on top. And the Eagles just keep pouring it on here in Statesboro. They are not letting up. Catching breaks as that one just loops in fair for Mason McCorder down the line. And here's another look. Sending it straight out to left field. Like you said, right on the line. A great ball for the Eagles. And left fielder Tucker Bradley tried to barehand it on the high hop. Big mistake, costly mistake. Might have cost them another run. It's now a six-run lead for the Eagles to work with. That one misses outside to Mitchell Golden. Still one away here in the bottom of the fourth inning. That one's called a strike into the Georgia Southern designated hitter. Over two tonight, it was over four last night, but last night most of the players Left SRP Park without a hit. He sends that one into center field. Anderson drifts over. He's going to make the catch. Curry tags from second. He'll sprint and slide into third. Runners on the corners with two away. And now with an absolute menace on the night for Georgia. Austin Thompson digs back in once again for the Eagles. Austin Thompson been productive at each at each at bat, and that's going to cause another meeting on the hill. So now it looks like Glover's day is done. He can't finish the inning. Comes on in relief, and Georgia Southern just continues to pour it on. They have a six-run lead to work with, and it's going to be Will Childers coming in, the freshman for the dogs when we come back. Georgia Southern is pouring it on here trying to get the three game sweep over the University of Georgia. Six runs on six hits and they aren't done quite yet. Runners on the corners with two away here for Austin Thompson. We're gonna see the new pitcher come in, Will Childers. For the Bulldogs, 1-0 on the year with a 1 ERA in 9 innings pitched. He's given up 7 hits and he has 12 punch outs. Georgia desperately needing a strikeout or something here to end the suffering here. A 4-run four 4th inning so far for the Eagles. That's right, and Georgia going into the bullpen now, giving younger players an opportunity. And right now we're seeing someone on the hill who has quite the history when it comes to baseball running in the family his father played and then his both of his uncles played and actually one of his uncles Terry was the starting catcher on Georgia's 1990 national championship team so a lot to live up to here runs in the family <laughs> not exactly competing for a national championship here in Statesboro tonight but nonetheless trying to get a much needed out and it's going to come against the hottest hitter on the evening the cleanup man for the Eagles Austin Thompson two for two a RBI single his last time up, and a leadoff triple back in the second inning to play to the game's first run.
Childers comes set and the first pitch to Thompson right over the middle of the plate, strike one. Curry on third, 90 feet away. Mason McWhorter is a man on first base. Thompson sends that one up the middle. Glove flip the second in time. Nice play, Cam Shepard. That will finally end the inning for the Bulldogs. It's still a six-run lead for the Eagles as we head to the fifth. The Dogs looking for an answer here as we start the fifth inning. Take a look at the series history between these two programs. The 114th time they've met up. Georgia leads the all-time series 59 to 53. The first matchup was way back in 1957. The Eagles took that one 6 to 4. The last one was last night. A 1-0 victory. And more of the same so far that we've seen in this series. Georgia Southern's coming out fired up. Good crowd on hand. Drawing from that energy. And it's a six-run lead here as we go to the fifth inning. A yeah, big opportunity for Georgia Southern here. Again, looking for the season series over the Dogs for the first time since 2015. So it's Jonathan Edwards back out for his second inning of work against the Bulldogs. He has a six-run lead to work with now. Gave up the first hit of the Bulldogs' day in his last half inning out, and he's quickly down 2-0 now to Patrick Sullivan. The Eagles have faced three ranked teams so far this year, including the Bulldogs here tonight, and they have yet to get a win over those teams, a top 25 East Carolina Pirate team and a top 25 Georgia Tech team. They went 0-3 on the road at East Carolina. They dropped the one home game against Georgia Tech here at J.I. Clemens Stadium. But so far against a team ranked higher than all those, the Georgia Bulldogs, Georgia Southern has looked entirely different. They are coming out there, they are playing hard, and they have yet to drop a game. And so far... It's been great news for the Eagles here tonight. And again, I think a lot of that comes with the motivation and the excitement behind going up against a ranked team and for the opportunity to knock off an opponent that's doing so well. Counts even at 2-2 now. Edwards kicks, fires, swung on one hopper, pass Curry at second, base hit. So there's some sign of life from the Bulldogs as Sullivan reaches with a leadoff single. If they can find a way to get things going, is that to bring up the designated hitter, Connor Tate. Tate takes that one. High ball one. It was a strikeout victim back in the second inning to Tyler Owens. And if you're just joining us, Owens went through the first three innings. Didn't give up a hit, didn't walk anyone. Eagles deciding to save his arm for later this week. One on one now as Edwards comes set, facing against Connor Tate. Swing and a miss. Good location there for the flame throwing. Righty off speed pitch drops in a little low, but gets Tate to chase. One, two now with a man aboard. Swing and a miss. Connor Tate's down on strikes. He's the first out of the fifth inning. Edwards 
Edwards doing a nice job holding his ground. Coming on in relief. Could quite uphold the standards of Tyler Owens. Didn't give up a base runner <laughs> in his three innings of work. Can't say that's an easy task against this Bulldog lineup. But so far, even in this third game of the series, the Eagles have managed to make it look a little weaker than it seemed to be. Bulldogs coming into tonight, according to the USA Today Baseball Top 25 Coaches Poll, we're number two in the nation behind only a big SEC East rival, the Florida Gators, who we'll see those two teams face off in a series this upcoming weekend. Ryan, that'll be a great series, too, and a great test for Georgia. And, and Florida coming off a huge loss to Florida State last night. So really it's showing, too, with these ranked teams, anything can happen. Garrett Blaylock digs back in now for the Dogs. 2-0 count to him. Edwards misses way high, ball three. Three balls, no strikes. Now as Edwards comes set, ready to deliver to Blaylock. And he clips the outside corner, strike one. Georgia Southern, eight and two right here on their home field. And there is strike number two from Edwards. Eagles trying to keep that very solid home record here against the Dogs tonight. Looking good so far. Payoff pitch now to Blaylock. Swung on, grounded past Curry at second base hit. Sullivan moves up 90 feet. He's going to hold what he's got there. Two on with one away. So now we're going to have a visit out on the Georgia Southern Mound. As there's two runners on for the first time tonight for Georgia. Finally have someone standing in scoring position. It's got to be a good sign for the Bulldogs as they've been very quiet offensively here in Statesboro. Well, Coach Strickland said himself before hitting the road that offensively they have a lot of depth and he's confident with his team when it comes to going up at bat. But defense, they've been needing to clean some things up and we're seeing that here tonight. Had a couple of errors back in the second inning. Georgia Southern couldn't make anything of it. Unfortunately, their pitching staff has been a little lackluster here tonight. Trying to rotate some more guys in there, trying to keep arms fresh, heading into conference play this weekend. But unfortunately, they've been walking a handful of guys, making mistakes up in the zone to some of these really talented hitters from Georgia Southern. And we'll see if the dogs can finally answer back. Marshall squares the punt, pulls back, takes ball one. one 0 -oh now to the Bulldog catcher. Squares the punt again. And Edwards can't find the zone. Marshall not bunting this time, but still takes outside ball three. So 
So Marshall was gift wrapping a free out to Georgia Southern in the form of a sacrifice bunt. And so far, Jonathan Edwards not taking it. It's a three ball, no strike count. And there's ball four. So Edwards will walk the bases loaded. That will bring up the nine hole hitter, Riley King, and see if he can do the exact opposite of what the Georgia Southern nine hole hitter did when he came up with the bases loaded in the second inning. But whatever he does, it is not going to be against Jonathan Edwards. We see Rodney Hennon walking out the dugout, making his way to the mound. That's going to be all for the first relief pitcher of the day for the Eagles. We're going to see a new face here. They're going to inherit a tricky situation. It's the bases loaded. There's only one out. And it's going to be the local kid out of Statesboro High School. Griffin Davis comes in to face Georgia. So the third pitcher of the third contest against Georgia for the Eagles is going to be Griffin Davis, local kid right out of Statesboro High School here in Georgia Southern's campus. Got a 10.13 ERA in just two and a two-thirds innings pitch. He's given up two hits, three strikeouts in those two, just over two innings. But he's coming in with the bases loaded and just one out. See if he can pitch to contact, try to get a ground ball and get out of this inning. And on the other end, Georgia is hoping for anything, any type of production they can find whatsoever. They finally got some guys in scoring position. They have two in there now in the form of Sullivan and Blaylock. Three hits on the day. They've got to find some way to just at least sh shorten the gap between the Georgia Southern Eagles so far who have had all the momentum all night long. That's right, Ryan. This is a great opportunity for Georgia to take advantage of having these bases loaded with a young pitcher stepping in and to be able to at least avoid the shutout. However, there's still enough ball game left to make some damage. But then as for Georgia Southern, Griffin Davis stepping in, what a great opportunity for him. Just as a right-handed pitcher, redshirt sophomore, like you said, right here out of Statesboro. Really, truly a great moment for him to get to go up against a top-ranked opponent. Coming off a redshirt freshman year where he was medically redshirted. So he's had to sat out, sit out an entire season. Made just five appearances in his actual freshman campaign. And the first pitch is down low. Nice stop by Avant to prevent a run from scoring. So back-to-back -back singles and a walk got us to this point that we are now. Bases loaded for the Bulldogs trying to get their first run of the night in the top of the fifth inning. one -oh to Riley King. Fouls it straight back. That'll be strike one. Leadoff man Ben Anderson waits on deck. Don't want to face them if you're Georgia Southern. Trying to get you a ground ball out of this. 1-1 one, one to King. Line drive to left. Cersei drifts over. He'll make the catch. Runner at third. Sullivan will tag up. He'll score. Georgia's on the board. Just like that, Georgia avoiding the shutout again. Exactly what we said they needed to do and take advantage of in this inning. So that spoils the chance for four straight shutouts as you see a replay here. And not a bad pitch from Griffin Davis. Breaking ball drops down, a little looping line drive. Not exactly the hardest hit ball to the left. Cersei had to catch that one on the run. Difficult throw, not able to set his feet. Sullivan scores, and it, to be completely honest, 
that run brings them within five. There's no need to try and make an, a, an incredible play and throw him out at the plate. Instead, to surrender the run, take the sure out, and keep the runners at bay at first and second. It's exactly what Cersei did. On the bright side, Georgia finally got something going for themselves. See if now the top of the order can continue to get it to roll. One O to Anderson. Ground ball towards first. Swan slides to a knee. He'll take it himself, and that is all Georgia will get. One run on the sacrifice fly. Griffin Davis gets out of a tough situation. It's still a five-run lead in the bottom of the fifth. Georgia finally gets one run on the board in the top of the fifth inning here in the bottom of the fifth. Georgia Southern tries to add to their already five-run lead. You see a lot of the SEC teams taking over college baseball. Florida at number one. Georgia second in the country at this minute. Ole Miss is five, and Vanderbilt is seventh in the USA Today coaches poll. Georgia was actually finished, fit, picked to finish third in the SEC East behind the Commodores from Vandy and the Gators. So far, so good. They remain in the top five rankings. They started out in the first game against Georgia Southern last week. They were ranked number four. Last night, ranked number three. Now they move up to that number two spot. And that makes, including the dogs, there are 11 total SEC programs in the top 25 in the country. Brian, speaking of the SEC, Coach Strickland called this road stretch very challenging, especially with them facing Florida next, who was the only undefeated team in the country until last night when they were shut up by Florida State at home 2 nothing. So the Gators' 16 straight wins was the third longest streak in school history. Line drive shot caught on a short hop by Garrett Blaylock. He'll throw the first in time to retire Christian Avian. So Noah Searcy digs back in for the Eagles. He's 0 for 1, but he has reached in both plate appearances. He reached on an error back in the second, was hit by a pitch right in that front left leg back in the four-run fourth for Georgia Southern. One zero from Childers. Up and away, ball two. Two O's cut on foul back from Noah Cersei. Mentioned it back when Georgia played it their first run as a 2 1. Is in for a strike to the Eagle left fielder. That the run scored here tonight, despite being down by five, Georgia scored a run back in the top of the fifth inning, and that ends the streak of shutouts by this Georgia Southern pitching staff. It's three straight, as this series was a little bit different if you've been keeping up with it. Between Georgia and Georgia Southern, you know the first game back in Athens last week at Foley Field, Georgia Southern won that one. Last night at SRP Park in Augusta, and then here tonight in Statesboro. And they're both teams played weekend series as Cersei is down on strikes. And Georgia Southern played against Valpo here on their home field and won the last two games one to nothing and 12 to nothing. And then the one nothing win last night in Augusta made it three shutout wins in a row. And that was one of the big question marks coming into this year was who was going to be your frontline starter after losing Seth Schumann to graduation. So far, a lot of guys have stepped up in a big way for Georgia Southern. And it, the future looks bright for this team down the 2020 conference schedule. That's right. And for head coach Rodney Hennon of the Eagles, that's exactly what you want to see. Next man on mentality. Who can step up and not replace, but 
be able to step in and be able to take over. And we're seeing that with the Eagles. So up comes Jason Swan. Had an RBI double his last time up. He takes a strike. Counts one and two. Mentioned Swan trying to get things going before the Eagles do face off with the Trojans this weekend to start Sunbelt play. That double hyped him up, scoring another run as he hits that one sharply towards first. Patrick Sullivan Fields takes it himself. And that is all for the Eagles in the fifth. We head to the sixth inning at J.I. Clemens Stadium. Six to one, Georgia Southern on top. A sports injury can stop you in your... Sold out J.I. Clemens Stadium here on a Wednesday night in Statesboro. And Eagle fans are loving it. 6-1. to one. Georgia Southern's on top. We go to the sixth inning here on ESPN+. Plus. And, Amy, it's been an excellent performance from the Georgia Southern pitching staff last night. And it carried right on over into tonight back on their home field. 6-1. to one. Haven't given up but three hits. Griffin Davis coming in in a bases loaded jam and got Georgia Southern out of it. This has been a very exciting ball game for Georgia Southern here at home against the ranked opponent. We saw the fans having some fun. Uh, everyone's in good spirits, especially when you have players from Georgia Southern making big plays that are from the area. Austin Thompson, again, a South Effingham High School alum and a Savannah native. And then you have Griffin Davis here stepping up on the hill right now, and he's a Statesboro native. So there is Cam Shepard, the two-hole hitter for the Bulldogs. He's 0 for 2 here tonight. Trying to make it back-to-back -back innings in which the Bulldogs have had their leadoff man on. One run on three hits, two errors for the visiting Bulldogs. Georgia Southern, six runs, six hits. No mistakes defensively so far for the Eagles. They have played a very clean game, a very energetic game. As the 0-1 misses high to Cam Shepard. That one finds the middle of the plate from Griffin Davis. Make it one and two. One, two now to the Georgia shortstop. Swing and a fly ball. It's going to stay on the infield. That one's way up there and high. He's going to take it. First baseman Swan catches it. There's out number one. That one went straight up off the bat of Cam Shepard. Griffin Davis giving way and letting the first baseman take over. Another Georgia hitter up to the plate. It's Tucker Bradley. He had one of the Georgia three hits here tonight. And he takes the curveball, drops in, ball one. Davis's 1-0 pitch, swung on and flied into shallow center field. Thompson drifts back. It's going to be Beatier. And Bradley's down on the fly out. So Griffin Davis has came in and took taken care of business here. See the fish play through just one inning. Got a tough situation to come in, allow just one run on it. The run was not charged to him. It's going to be charged to Jonathan Edwards. But 
He's going to face off with Cole Tate here in the top of the sixth inning, trying to finish out another clean inning for Georgia Southern. That one misses low to the Bulldogs cleanup hitter. That one's poked in a shallow right field. McCorner comes on, and the Bulldogs are down in order in the sixth. To the bottom of the six we go on ESPN Plus. Five run lead for the Georgia Southern Eagles. Will Childers back out on the mound for the Bulldogs through his one and a third. He's thrown 14 pitches. Has it given up a hit? Has it given up a run? Has one strikeout to his resume. One of the very few bright spots for the Bulldogs here in Statesboro tonight. They trail 6-1. to one. Bottom of the six, Georgia Southern coming up. It'll be at the bottom of the order, 8-9, and, and then back to the top with Curry. Beanier, this is the first time he's coming up to the dish without runners on. He was walked on four pitches. He's seen eight pitches tonight. And they've all been outside the zone. Hasn't swung the bat just yet. First time was a walk to load the bases. Second time was to put runners on first and second. See if he can get to swing it this time in his third plate appearance. Not on that one, ball one. Beatier coming off a great performance. This their last matchup, blasting his first triple for the Eagles this season. The extra base hit ended up being the answer the Eagles needing. Scoring the only run of the ball game last night. Two zero already to the Georgia Southern center fielder. There's his first swing of the night. Two one. Swings and pops that one up out of play. Foul over the stands on that Georgia Southern side. Two-two pitch, chopped towards second. Cole Tate charges and underhand flip to first. Beatier is down on the ground now, out number one. So now Blake Evans comes back up. He's got one hit on the night. Single back in the fourth inning. Brought in an RBI, the sophomore over at third base. One of the many faces we've seen on the hot corner for Georgia Southern. He squares to bunt, drops it down the line, and it rolls foul. Smart play by Blaylock to pick that one up in foul ground. Beatier and Evans both have had a handful of bunt hits on the year. That's what makes the bottom part of this order so dangerous. They can run into one very often and drive it, as you saw last night with Beatier with a triple that ended up Coming around to score the one and only run on the night for Georgia Southern or Georgia. Do a good job of turning things over back to the top of the order. But this time Evans takes and he's down 0-2. O2 now to the Georgia Southern third baseman, and it's up and away. One ball, two strikes. Evans got a lot of starts last season as a freshman. 
We saw the freshman Jarrett Brown start opening weekend here for the Eagles. We see Mitchell Golden come in and play that corner. Rodney Hennon deciding to go with Blake Evans here in this series. And now the count's even at two and two. Two-two pitch, topped over the pitcher. Nice play by Tate, throw over, is it in time? No. Tough play already, and then you got the speedy Blake Evans making his way down the first baseline. That's going to be an infield hit for the Georgia Southern third baseman. And here's another look. Tate able to make the catch, just not able to get over the first in time. Close call, though. Good effort to make that play as close as it was. When it was off the bat, I figured that was already either going to squeak through or there was no chance they'd get him. And Evans barely beats it out over at first base. Now he's aboard one away. Back to the top of the order we go. Stephen Curry, who's one for two. Georgia Southern, a very junior-heavy team. The majority of their starting nine tonight are all in their third year. Line drive, almost caught. The throw to first will get him in. Evans was roaming off of second base. I think he thought that was the final out of the inning, and he nearly gets picked off. Take another look. That looked like it. Probably stung a little bit. Almost got his glove around to corral that one somehow. Good reaction time from Childers, but still finds a way to get Curry out at first. And Blake Evans nearly caught sleeping, rounding third base, second base, excuse me, and just thought that was the third and final out. Was about to trot back to the dugout instead, dives back in safely. He's in scoring position now for Mason McHorter. McCorder hit that looper down the left field line to bring in another run for Georgia Southern. The team leader in hits coming into tonight was the senior McCorder. Curry and McCorder, the only two seniors in this starting lineup. He hits that one into the shift. Throw to first is in time from Cam Shepard. And that's all for the six. We will head to the top of the seventh when we come back on ESPN+. Plus. Following tonight's contest against the Bulldogs, Georgia Southern starts conference play this weekend from J.I. Clemens Stadium against the Trojans out of Troy. We'll then go up to Atlanta to face Georgia Tech back on the road against South Alabama. Up to Charleston to play them in a one-game contest. And then back to conference play here at home against Louisiana Monroe. Yeah, and this is just such a great setup, I think, for Georgia Southern to be able to enter conference play. Coming off this series, knowing that they can compete against nationally ranked opponents. Not only compete, but win. They've won two out of three already, looking like they're on their way towards a sweep. Here tonight, up five runs going to the seventh inning. It's still Griffin Davis out on the bump. He's looked sharp. He'll start things off against the first baseman from the Dogs, Patrick Sullivan. Sullivan has one of Georgia's three hits on the evening. That came back in the fifth inning.
Sullivan takes the first two pitches out of the hand of Griffin Davis, both outside the zone, 2-0. Oh. Three balls, no strikes now to the Georgia Bulldogs, first baseman. That one finds the inside half strike one three one the count now to Sullivan. As we previously mentioned in the broadcast, Bulldogs the third ranked team Georgia Southern has faced off with. That one is hit down the line foul ball from Sullivan. You just saw it in the upcoming schedules graphic. They will face another team that they already lost to in a nail-biter this season, Georgia Tech. Lost to them here from J.I. Clements Stadium. They will travel up to Atlanta to face them after their three-game series with Troy. Got swept on the road at East Carolina. That was more of a tune-up series. Nothing was really clicking for Georgia Southern that early in the season. As Rodney Hennon said, they tried to figure themselves out, get started early in games. They got started early here tonight. This one's fly, Swan drifts over into foul ground. He camps out underneath it, and there is the first down. Eagles were picked to finish third in the Eastern Division of the Sun Belt Conference behind teams like South Alabama and Coastal Carolina. The Eagles actually fell at the hands of the Chanticleers last season in the Sun Belt Championship game. That would have gave them a bid to the NCAA tournament and make it into a regional bracket, but instead they got cut off a little short in heartbreaking fashion trying to take that next step this year. All starts this weekend against Troy. We'll see a new hitter come in for the Bulldogs, Chaney Rogers, out of Ringgold, Georgia. A junior coming in for the designated hitter, Connor Tate, who was hitless on the evening. Rodgers takes a breaking ball, drops in for a strike from Davis, one and two. One, two from Griffin Davis, hit towards Curry at second plane. Deep charges, makes the throw. Two away. Two Take a look at this replay of the breaking ball right over the middle of the plate. Luckily, Rogers rolls over and hits to Stephen Curry at second base, who was already playing well into the outfield grass. And now another lefty digs in for the Bulldogs. Garrett Blaylock comes back up. He's looking for his second hit on the night. Blaylock, one of those players who's had an interesting career attending Vanderbilt his freshman season and then his sophomore year making his way over to St. John's River State College. Now here he is playing with the Georgia Bulldogs. Third program in as many years, trying to make that adjustment. So far, so good. 
for Blaylong, but he's trying to really get that average up. He's batting under 200 on the year. A hit tonight might get him going in the right direction. Speaking of going in the right direction, Griffin Davis has looked really sharp hitting his spots here in his few innings of work. Good opportunity for him to face off against a solid lineup. He didn't get that much action so far coming into tonight. With the midweek game, he's getting a chance to throw against the nationally ranked Bulldogs, and Avant got fooled, a little crossed up on that one. And again, opportunities like this for Griffin Davis are just so huge, especially coming off of a medical redshirt season. You really want to have any opportunity you can to prove yourself that you know, you're capable of coming in and working your way into the lineup and, and getting things done for your team, and he's been doing a good job of that. Just adding another weapon to the arsenal in Rodney Hennon's bullpen. 3-1 pitch, cut on and miss from Blaylock. Three balls, two strikes, two away here in the top of the seventh inning. Payoff pitch, skied into shallow right field. McWhorter comes in, and there's out number three. Georgia Southern maintains a five-run lead. It's time to stretch in Statesboro on ESPN+. Plus. Bulldogs trying to mount a comeback here tonight, failing thus far. But after tonight, they will have two games to take on the Florida Gators, number one ranked Florida Gators, before hosting USC Upstate, then South Carolina in another three-game series, having the Wofford Terriers come to town and then going to the seventh-ranked Vanderbilt Commodores out in Nashville. We're going to have another new pitcher on the mound for the Dogs. It's Michael Polk. Another freshman takes the hill for Georgia. Polk with not that much action so far in 2020. Four innings pitch. Hasn't given up a hit yet. Five strikeouts on just three walks. No decision, so zero win and loss record. Another tune-up opportunity for him to work with here. Get some valuable experience against Georgia Southern, who has been swinging it really well. They've been quiet the past two innings on the bright side for Georgia. They've been much needing that after the four-run fourth. So Polk is the fourth pitcher on the day for the Dogs, the third to come in, come on in relief. He's going to start things off with the heart of the order. Mitchell Golden, Austin Thompson, and Christian Avant coming up for Georgia Southern. Polk, no stranger to being in this position, graduate of Cambridge, and he primarily saw action as a reliever closer during his time in high school. Back in that relieving role here tonight, coming on in the bottom of the seventh inning. And his first pitch is a breaking ball in for a called strike. Golden's 0 for 2 tonight. He's out on his front foot, swing and a miss. No balls, two strikes. Not a bad spot from Polk. Misses outside, though. One ball, two strikes. Golden, the first of a stretch of juniors in this Georgia Southern lineup. Three through the eight spots, all in their third year. It takes low and away, ball two. So 
So two and two, the count now to Mitchell Golden. Swing and a base hit to left field. So Golden with a little inside out base hit. He boy with a lead off single. So up comes the cleanup man for the Eagles. It's Austin Thompson having a great night. Two for three, a triple and a single. Back in the second and third innings, hit into a fielder's choice in the fourth. He's two for three. See if he can keep a hot streak going here in the seventh. Whereas a bun pulls back on the high heat. There's another look at Austin Thompson's stats. He really came into this game and set the tone for the Eagles, getting them off to that hot start in the second inning. Off-speed pitch on the 1-0, called a strike by the home plate umpire, Kevin Kesey. One one pitch from Polk. Curveball is hit high into shallow left center. Both outfielders come on, and the catch is going to be made by Ben Anderson. So Thompson is the first out of the bottom half of the seventh inning. Here comes the catcher, Christian Avan. Back up for his fourth plate appearance. Avant getting the start behind the plate here tonight. He's also got a lot of playing time out in the outfield. The true utility man with a handful of other catchers on the Georgia Southern roster. He squares to bunt and fouls it off the backstop. Mitchell Golden still stands on first after the leadoff single here, one away in the bottom of the seventh inning. Ball in the dirt, stopped by Marshall. One ball, one strike. Folks pitch, fouled off. One, two, now the count to the Georgia Southern catcher. Just one of three Eagles that have started all 15 games, along with Mason McWhorter and Stephen Curry. Everyone else has got a lot of playing time, and not to take away from them, but the only three that have been in the starting lineup in some shape or form. That one short hops the catcher, throw offline from Marshall. So Golden moves up an extra 90 feet. He's in scoring position. That gets rid of the double play opportunity for the Dogs. <laughs> Payoff pitch to Avan. Swing and a miss. He goes down, swinging two away. Okay. 
So the left-hander, Noah Searcy, will come back up to the dish for the Eagles. He's 0 for 2. He struck out, swinging back in the fifth inning. Looking for his first hit and a chance to drive in yet another Georgia Southern run. There's pitch swinging, pitch sharply, but well fouled. Reached base twice, back on an error in his first at bat in the second, hit by a pitch in the fourth. Trying to get his first hit though, here in his fourth at bat, that one misses high, one ball, one strike. And this is actually Cersei's first time facing the Bulldogs. This season on March 3rd, he was not up to bat against them and then in their last game last night, didn't see action either at the plate. This season has three runs and eight hits. He took a big hack at that one, came up completely empty. Down in a one-two count with two away here in the seventh. Swing and a miss. Polk strikes out two batters in a row to get out of the runner situation. It's still a 6-1 game on ESPN+. Plus. Eagle fans loving what they are seeing here in Statesboro tonight. They lead 6-1 over the visiting Georgia Bulldogs. Here at J.I. Clemens Stadium, we're going to see yet another pitcher out on the mound. For the Eagles, this one's going to be Tyler Jones. Coming out, it's making his fifth inning of work, starting it off right here tonight. He's giving up two hits, seven strikeouts, just one walk so far this year. As the Bulldogs are just six outs away from a series sweep. Hasn't been the prettiest of times for the number two team in the land, but they've still got a lot of work through. They have a chance here. Jones coming in, not that much experience on the year. See if they can rough him around just a little bit, but so far the bats of the Bulldogs have been really quiet. Gonna have a pinch hitter come in for the Bulldogs, Caden Fowler. So Caden Fowler steps up for his first time, pinch hitting, swinging him in, strike one. Tyler Jones, the junior right-hander, delivers, and Fowler takes that one in for a call strike quickly, 0-2. Two is fouled away. Fowler coming in and hitting for the catcher, Shane Marshall. Caden Fowler, another one of those utility guys on college baseball rosters, listed as an outfielder and catcher. Yeah, Fowler, too, with an interesting career. A true co transfer from Barton Community College. And there he led the team in just about everything and set a school record in doubles with 28. Maybe carrying over some of that junior college experience to the plate here tonight. Georgia still looking 
or any type of offensive productivity. They got one run back in the fifth, and Fowler does a good job of fighting off a good pitch from Tyler Jones. If you haven't been watching us for the entire game tonight, it's been all Eagles all day long. One run in the second, one in the third, then exploded for four. Take a 6 nothing lead in the fourth inning. Georgia answered back in the top of the fifth with one of their own, but that's been it for the Dogs. Nothing going. One run on three hits. On the other end, the bats have exploded for the Eagles. They've got six runs, eight hits, capitalizing on nearly every missed opportunity from the Bulldogs. And an off-speed pitch, and that'll be three strikes on Fowler. Beautiful hanging curveball from Tyler Jones. Finds the outside corner of the plate. Fowler didn't like the call, but nonetheless, he's heading to the dugout. Yeah, you can watch Fowler looking down there, and he ended up walking off, shaking his head. Didn't like it, but he's still the first out of the inning. That'll bring up Riley King. King has the lone RBI on the day for the Dogs. Had a sacrifice fly to no Cersei in left. Check swing. He went around. Strike two. Speaking of the Georgia Southern defense, Matt Anderson has come on to catch. Christian Avant shifted out to right field. Mason McCorder moved over to the left. Cersei has been removed from the game. That's a good pinch, but it misses the zone. Jones thought he had strike three. So that one misses, and the count's even at two and two. Back to back balls, make it a full count now to Riley King. Swing a high five ball. Swan goes back, Avant comes in. It's going to be the right fielder, Avant. Trading in the catcher's gear for an outfield glove. He makes the play in foul ground. There's two away. Ben Anderson, the leadoff hitter, he's 0 for 2 tonight. Swings at that one in for all the Georgia Southern fans tuning in tonight. The Georgia Southern men's basketball team has officially won. They won 81 to 62 on the road at Georgia State in the Sun Belt quarterfinals. They will play Arkansas Little Rock on Saturday in New Orleans in the semifinal game in the conference tournament. Tyler Jones drops another breaking ball in for a strike. And now one and two to the Georgia Southern leadoff man. Swing and a foul ball over the netting. We'll do it again, still one and two. Swing and a ground ball up the middle. Thompson dives, can't get it. Two out, base hit for Ben Anderson. So now Cam Shepard digs back in, the senior shortstop. Still looking for his first hit on the day. Now with a runner on. 
Swings at the first pitch. Fouls it off Matt Anderson. Strike one. That one way high to Cam Shepard. Counts even. Two one now to the senior Bulldog. Trying to make this game just a little bit closer. They still trail by five with two away in the top of the eighth. The two one is foul back. Ryan again, Shepherd's father, Mike, played collegiately here at Georgia Southern back during the 1985-87 uh, seasons. So how do you think the family's feeling right now? Conflicted. <laughs> Conflicted. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Shepard's down on strikes. That ends the top of the eighth for the Georgia Bulldogs. We go to the bottom of the inning. Eagles looking to add their already five-run lead. Six one Georgia Southern leads. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. It's been all Eagles here at J.I. Clement Stadium, and it's forcing the Bulldogs to go to another arm out the bullpen. It's going to be Kane Tatum, another freshman coming in for the Dogs. He has a 2.7 ERA so far in 2023 in a third innings pitch. Four hits, three strikeouts, and just trying to be in the damage control department here tonight. Keep this a five-run lead and hope Georgia can pull off a miracle in the top of the ninth. And Tatum, just a freshman, standing at six feet eight inches tall. Six foot eight. So that well, is a very long frame yeah. out there on the mound. See what he's got against Georgia Southern. He's going against the seven, eight, and nine hitters. Jason Swan, Parker, Beatier, and Blake Evans do up. See if Roddy Hennon makes any changes like Scott Strickland has on the opposing side. Here is Jason Swan leading things off for the Eagles. He had a double back in the fourth inning to get Georgia Southern started on that explosive stretch and he is hit by a pitch flips the bat takes off the protective equipment looks to be all right he'll trot towards first here's another looking pitch Ooh, get him right in the back the arm there got that elbow padding on him looks like it hit just above it Seems to be fine over there on first. The second hit batsman of the day for Georgia Southern. Leadoff man now on for Parker Beatier. Beatier squares the bunt, fouls it off. Was he still in the box? The umpire says yes, he was. Over one tonight, two walks back in the second and fourth inning, grounded out his last time up in the sixth. And as you've mentioned earlier in this game, Jason Swan, a definite threat to steal over at first base, already got seven swipe bags on the year. Throw over to first to check on him as Beatier was already squaring the bunt before Taylor even came set. Oh, one now to Beatier. Gets away. That one just completely outside the zone. And now Beatier doesn't even need a bunt. Swan moves up 90 feet on the wild pitch. Taylor's 
Tatum needing to get settled here entering this ball game. Mason Meadows is the new Bulldog catcher behind the plate. Same defensive alignment outside of the new catcher. Shane Marshall was pinch hit for it earlier in the game. Breaking ball misses. Now it's two and one. Meteor still looking to bunt here. Swan stands on second, 2-1 count, and he will drop a bunt down, but it rolls foul. Tough pitch to bunt on. That one really up in the zone and pumped it up for a split second, and it rolls into foul territory. And now he's not going to bunt more than likely you would assume here in the 2-2 count. Looks like he is still squaring, even with two strikes. Pulls it back and fouls it off. Eagles just looking to add some extra insurance here, already up by five, out hitting the Bulldogs eight to four thus far. Curveball misses outside from Tatum. The freshman comes set, kicks, fires. That one's off the end of the bat from Beatier. Shepard's got to hurry. Throw to first is in time. So Swan doesn't advance on the softly hit ground ball. He's still at second base. Not a productive out for Beatier, but that'll bring up Blake Evans. Will Blake Evans be facing off with Kane Tatum? That is yet to be seen. We're going to have a conference on the hill. Evans has got two hits on the night, batting from that ninth spot. Had two singles, an RBI single back in the fourth inning. Georgia Southern scored in three straight innings, one in the second, one in the third, four in the fourth. Since then, Georgia's been able to keep them a little more quiet, but the damage was already done by that point. That's right, Ryan, but Georgia's... Georgia Southern still playing very aggressive here, especially with their runners on with Jason Swan. We've seen him just constantly inching his way, already stealing second. He's been having, like you said, a pretty big lead over on second base. See if Evans can at least move him over 90 more feet. Get back to the top of the order. Curry's got one hit, so does McWhorter. But tonight has been Blake Evans. He's got two singles, trying to get another RBI, make it 7-1 Eagles. Another curveball drops in for a first pitch strike. Evans squares the bunt. He pulls back on the outside fastball, 1-1. Does try to drop a bunt down this time, but it rolls well foul. One and two. So Beatier or Evans, two of the most prominent bunters on this Georgia Southern team, actually punt for base hits. Every once and again, just can't get one down here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Now counts even two balls, two strikes.
Swan is going to swipe third base without a throw. Got off to a great start. Tatum didn't even check him at second base. Evans goes down swinging. So that will bring up Stephen Curry and the rest of the Georgia Southern top of the order. Curry's one for three tonight. That one hit a single back in the third inning, and he swings and misses at a big curveball from Tatum. One ball, one strike to the Georgia Southern leadoff man. Inside ball two. Tyler Jones, the last pitcher out for Georgia Southern on the mound. See if we see him or a new face as someone is getting a little loose out in the Georgia Southern bullpen. As another curveball drops in for a strike to Curry. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Tatum trying to get out of it. Swing and a miss from Curry, and he will. So Eagles can't capitalize on the runner in scoring position. George is down to their final three outs on ESPN+. So it is going to be Tyler Jones back out on the rubber to try and finish this one out for the Eagles. Georgia Southern leads 6-1 to one here in the top of the ninth inning on ESPN+. Plus. Bulldogs trying to pull off a miraculous comeback and avoid the se season sweep by Georgia Southern. A much unexpected season sweep as the first pitch from Jones misses outside. Swing and a miss from Tucker Bradley, one and one. Bulldogs coming into this series, top five in the nation. Georgia Southern coming in winless against ranked opponents in 2020, and it's Looking at paper, you thought this might be a bit of a lopsided series, but the Eagles have dominated game in and game out. Bradley takes high and away, counts even two balls, two strikes. That one shot down the first baseline. Foul ball. Bradley, one of the few and far between Georgia Bulldogs that have base hits tonight. He had a single back in the fourth inning. Jones winds up the 2 2 pitch. Flying to the left. Will it stay in play? No, it will not. Off the batting cages out there near the foul pole in left field. So another 2 2 fought off from Tucker Bradley. Two two cut on and missed, and there's the first out of the ninth inning. Just two outs separate Georgia Southern and breaking the brooms out on their home field. Batting in the cleanup spot, 
So now Cole Tate digs in for the Bulldogs, trying to spark some type of rally here with just two outs between them and back-to-back -back losses. All-speed pitch taken high, ball one. Taken outside. Two balls, one strike. Big swing and a miss from the Georgia Southern cleanup man. Counts even at two and two. Swing and a miss, back-to-back -back strikeouts to start the ninth. And just one out remaining between a sweep in Statesboro. Ryan, a huge opportunity for Georgia Southern here. This will be just the fourth time the Eagles have won the three-game series against Georgia, the last time being in 2015, and before that, 1993 and 1957. And in 2015, the last time when the Eagles did this, that was when Georgia finished last in the SEC East. It's been more of a rebuilding program and now an established dominance, or so we thought, coming into this week for the Bulldogs since Scott Strickland got hired. Back in 2013, he built that program up from a very struggling point. But so far in this series, the more experienced man at the helm, Rodney Hennon, has done an outstanding job. Got his 800th career head coaching win last night. Looks like he might get 801 right here. Long line drive down the left field line. McCorder drifts over, and that's the ball game. Six to one the final. Georgia Southern breaks the broom out against the in-state foe. They take the series sweep from the number two ranked Georgia Bulldogs. Something Georgia Southern has not done since 2015. So a great couple of uh, wins for Georgia Southern under their belts. As for Georgia, this is going to be something that they're going to have to just put behind them and go into Florida now ready to fight back and rebound. Eagles improve to 15, excuse me, Georgia drops to 14 and 4. Eagles improve to 11 and 5. They'll face Troy right here at J.I. Clemens Stadium this weekend. The Bulldogs will travel to Gainesville right here from Statesboro to take on the number one team in the country, the Florida Gators. So for Amy Zimmer, I am Ryan Pye saying so long from J.I. Clemens Stadium where the final score is Georgia Southern 6. Georgia won. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.